Mingo, Mingo! Larry, at last I found you. Two days now I've been following your tracks. I need your help. What is it? What's wrong? My father. I hear much talk of a new white man's law at Logan's Fort. I went there to find out. Someone shot at me and drove me away. Yes, I've heard the same talk myself. Indians being driven from their own lands. My father is a brave man, Mingo. He will not be driven off land that belongs to him. But does it belong to him, Kanadi? Uh, legally? It is mine. And what is mine is my father's. It says so here, in, in this white man's language. It's yours, all right. A land grant for service in the Continental Army. I see you've transferred the title to your father. Crawford Green. A gift from me, his son, Kanati Green. But I'm afraid that without that piece of paper, they will take it away from him. Rebecca, it's almost a perfect fit. You hmm? still don't look like a Kentuckian to me, Mingo. Your hair is too long. Well, we can fix that easily enough. Rebecca? Oh, Mingo, I couldn't. Give it to me. I'll do it. Well, thank you, Israel. I want my hair cut off, not my head. Rebecca, it has to be done. Pa, ask Mingo to let me do some of the cutting. I got a better idea, son. Why don't you go out and tote in that wood like you're supposed to? Oh, Pa. This outfit you've got on, does that have anything to do with that young Indian boy that was killed? Well, in case I run into his killer, I don't want to make things easy for her. What are you planning on doing? Go to Logan's Fort, try to take care of Kanadi's last request? Well, that's a far piece if you want me to... Come along now. Now, Daniel, the new settlers have just arrived. They'll be needing your help. And this place you're going is not exactly known for hospitality to strangers. Don't worry, Daniel. Think how much worse it would be if I rode in there as an Indian stranger. Well, if you're not back in a week, I'm going to come looking for you. It may take that long for your wife to get up the courage to cut my hair. All right, Mingo, all right. Here goes.
about your business. Something I can do for you, mister? Yes, I'd like a room. Well, I was sure you had one available. It seems so quiet around here. That's the way we like it, quiet. Yes, well, what about the room? You're just passing through. Well, if you mean did I come to settle here, the answer is no. How long are you expecting to stay? You certainly ask a lot of questions for a tavern keeper. We don't mess on up to strangers. Now, that's a strange attitude for a man who rents out rooms. Maybe you ought to change your profession. Money ain't everything. Oh, well, I guess it isn't. How about the room? Fifty cents a day in advance. Put your mark in here. Ah, uh, you don't want to mind old Reuben here, Mr. Mingo. It's been so long since we had any travelers through here, he just done forgot his manners. Through that door, third room on our right. My name's Boker. Does that mean anything to you? No, I'm afraid it doesn't. And you come quite a ways, Mr. Mingo, because everybody within a hundred miles knows the name Boker. Yes, well, it's a pleasure meeting you anyway. What brings you to Logan's Fort? One thing was the thought of a warm bed and a place to clean up. I know what you mean. <laughs> I've been trail dusty and bone weary myself a few times. You should not have let him stay without Logan say so. You tend to the clerk. If Logan's not here. I'll do the thinking. He's probably just a trapper passing through. And I hope so. But I got the feeling I know him from somewheres. Except I ain't never heard nobody talk that fancy before. Maybe you never heard him talk. Maybe you just seen him. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Come in. I'll come back to clean up after you've gone out. Uh, would you mind cleaning up now? This place is even dustier than I am. As you wish. My name is Mingo. What's yours? Alkini Matthews. Alkini. What a pretty name. I've never been in Logan's Fort before. What's it like, Alkini? Like all young settlements, trying to grow. I always thought a community's growth depended on new settlers, but they don't seem to encourage newcomers here. There are enough people in Logan's Fort. According to whom? This fellow Logan? You know work, Logan? No, but I've seen his name everywhere. He must be very important. He is. Hokini. Sounds Cherokee, isn't it? Yes, and Matthews is Scottish. <laughs> I meant no offense. Well, then why didn't you ask about the Scottish part? I have a great many friends among the Cherokee. Some of them lifelong friends whom I hold very dear. Then you don't belong in Logan's Fort. You must be the stranger rode in earlier. That's right. My name is Mingo. So I heard. News traveled swiftly here at Logan's Fort. Only has short ways to go. And, uh, your name? That is Hill. Dispenser and upholder of law and order in this here settlement. Not to mention such public services as acting preacher at weddings and funerals. You're a trapper. Come to sell furs? Oh, no, no, I'm not selling anything. Getting married? Oh, no. Well, then what in tarnation are you plaguing me for? Can't you see I'm busy? Uh, John Mills' essay on liberty. It warms a citizen's heart to see the law's deputy reading the fine words of a courageous thinker. Helps pass time, that's all. He was writing about a civilized England hundred years ago. His words don't hold no water out here on the frontier. Our problems are a mite different. 
always thought that liberty was for all the ages, Mr. Hill. Now, what is it you want? I'm looking for an Indian by the name of Crawford Green. Do you have any idea where I can find him? Old Craw Green. He picked up six. When? Eight, nine months ago. Well, do you know where he went? I don't keep a record of every redskin breed that comes and goes around here. Old Craw moved when all of them moved. All of them? Indians and half-breeds, too. They run them all out. Law and Order Committee. These Indians, were they settlers? Some of them were. Well, who got their land when they left? White men. The titles weren't registered. And them that were, were illegal. They're redskins, aren't they? Kentucky's a white men's territory. You're not much of an American if you say it isn't. American by whose standards? Brock Logan's? Piece of advice. Logan owns the tavern, the trader store, and everything else for miles around. He's no man to fool with. Well, neither am I. So why don't you tell me where Craw Green used to live? Somewhere's a few miles east of here. I I don't exactly know. Mr. Hill. That is. You and I both know that you have records with all the locations of the homes in this area, including Craw Green. Now, I'm a patient man, Thaddeus, but not too patient. And so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you one hour to look through those records and find that location. Do you understand? <laughs> This ain't no resting place. Well, you work here, too. It keeps me out of trouble. Well, stock trading post you have here. If it's a meal you're hankering for, we're fresh out. Well, then I'll, I'll have an ale. That is a bar, isn't it? Uh, there ain't no more ale. Here's a Reuben. Now, is there something else you'd be wanting, Mr. Mingo? You might be able to save me some time at that, Mr. Boker. You wouldn't happen to know where Craw Green lived before he left? No, I wouldn't. And neither would anybody else in here. So just save your breath. Now, I'm going to be asking you a few questions. Where are you from? Boonesboro. How long do you plan on staying here? Well, that depends. On what? On how soon I find what I'm looking for. And when you do, then what? I can't be sure. That depends on what I find. Big secret, huh? More of a personal matter. Uh-huh. Well, folks here in Logan's Fort, we don't cotton too much to strangers sticking their nose in where it ain't none of their concern. Mr. Bulker, I wouldn't be here if it weren't my concern. Now, if there's anything else you'd like to ask me... No, I reckon not.
very kind of you, Alkini. Don't take it personally. I'd do the same for a wounded animal. I thank you all the same. I'll pack your saddlebag. Well, I'm not leaving. You're not leaving. You like to be hurt. Well, I asked to see Crow Green's place. I haven't seen it yet. If you stay, then you're the one causing trouble. They've told you Craw Green has gone with the others. Then why can't I see his place? Because you're trying to make trouble for the Law and Order Committee. Well, the Law and Order Committee, which consists of one man, Logan, who's forced all the Indians and half-breeds from their homes. Except you, it seems. Yes. Except me. Because I'm Logan's woman. <laughs> I figured he was a trapper passing through. So uh, I figured if, if we refused him without any reason, then it would look like we was hiding something. And then it turns out he's looking for old Crog Green. So when he come in here, after paying a visit to Thaddeus here, I let him know, clear and simple, we don't like his snooping around. No one was to stop here without my permission. Yeah, yes, but you wasn't here. But my orders so were, and you chose to ignore them. I told him we shouldn't give him out the room. Well, at least we've gained one thing. Thaddeus here has demonstrated his loyalty. Isn't that true, Thaddeus? I went right to Boker. Uh, this man, he's not ordinary. Oh? In what way does he stand out? He didn't impress me as the kind of people who run. But you did get him out of here, didn't you? Well, <laughs> me and the boys, we gave him a terrible beating, didn't we, Reuben? Did he well, leave, Boker? I told you, this man's not like no one you know, except maybe yourself. Is he still here, Booker? Well, uh, he's... Come on, Thaddeus. I'll not leave until I see Crow Green's place. So why don't you tell me where it is? Mr. Logan has come to see you. Oh, well, let him come in. Alkini, I'd like a few words alone with this gentleman. Are you with the government? Why do you want to know? You answer me and I'll tell you. No, I'm not. We've had to stretch the law a bit around here to get rid of some troublemakers. You mean the Indians? I mean Indians. Well, your men stretch the law a little bit with me, too. Government agents understand our problems out here, and they usually look the other way when we break a rule or two. We had to be sure about you. You know, I don't think I like your community, Mr. Logan. No one asked you to. Now, will you be needing any supplies before you ride out of here? You must know by now I'm not leaving. Thaddeus here, among others, has told you that old Indian breed no longer lives in Logan's Fort. So he has. But, as the Cherokees say, he's given his voice to you. Do you know about the Cherokees? I uh, try to know as much as I can about the people I call my friends. <laughs> ah, you were right, that is. This gentleman is no ordinary man. Now, I give you my voice. Craw Green is no longer here. Do you accept it? I accept it. I'm glad you do. But I still intend to see his place. Give the paper to, uh, what's your name? Mingo. To Mingo. 
The location of Craw Green's place. Shall we go? Much of a place as you can see. Crow didn't have any ambition. Of course, I I can't blame him, seeing that he was an Indian. Satisfied? Gentlemen, know what this is? Got no idea. This is an image of Nuri, Cherokee Earth God, who promises a good harvest. They'd be better off with hard work than relying on promises. It seems to me, Mr. Logan, that you and I know a different breed of Cherokee. The ones I know take pride in hard work. You know Craw Green? No. You puzzle me, Mingo. Why do you waste so much time on a redskin you don't even know? Let's say I owe it to an old friend. Fair enough. Now, it appears that I value my time more highly than you do. So we're going to be riding back to the settlement now. Green went. No. The reason I asked that cabin back there, Craw Green still considers that his home. I don't get the drift of your words. No Cherokee would leave to settle in a new land without his Nuri. He'd die first. Well, like you say, we, we must know a different breed of Cherokee. Thaddeus, you're a reading man and a veteran of the wilderness. Would you agree that the customs of the Cherokee vary where their gods are concerned? Oh, I forgot your voice is owned by Mr. Logan here. I don't know nothing about no Cherokees and their gods. I think it's time you rode out of here. I still have reason to stay, Mr. Logan. You know, you try a man's patience to the quick. Sorry it upsets you. Mango, I don't make threats too often. But when I do, I mean them. I'm sure you do. All right, you better ride. I will, when I'm ready. You've been warned. Thaddeus. Still reading your essay on liberty, I see. I told you before, it helps pass time. Most people are asleep at this hour. Unless they have trouble sleeping. That's got nothing to do with it. Sleep just don't come so easy when you get older. 
You got no right bothering me in the middle of the night. I came to ask you a few questions. I got nothing to say to you, stranger. Oh, yes, you do. And you also have something to say to yourself. And when you do, maybe sleep won't be such a problem. You're a bright man in some ways, and a large fool in others. You got any idea what Logan intends to do to you if you don't ride out of here? He'll try to kill me. You know that. <sighs> then you're dumber than a hoot owl moaning in the night so the coyote can find him. And what's your life worth? Living in fear, so full of pain you can't draw one peaceful breath. At least it's a life. Why don't you leave Logan's Fort, Thaddeus? Well, I've been here too long. It's, it's my home. Yes. It was also Craw Green's home. We've been over that ground. Not all of it. His land had the water. Did he prevent the settlers from using it? No, he didn't. Well, what about now? Does Logan let them have it for nothing? There's a small monthly fee. But the money's used to help build the community. To help build Logan's power, you mean? Now, look here, Mingo. All you're gonna do is kick up a fuss and get your neck broken. Now, leave us be. We made our bed. We'll sleep in it. The way you're sleeping now? No, Thaddeus, you're a better man than that. And that's why your stomach won't stop turning over and over. But Logan owns this place, Mingo. There's nothing can be done about it. He doesn't own Craw Green's place. Craw Green does. Tell me about it, Thaddeus. All right. I'll show you. This is his grave. He was the toughest redskin you ever did see. Despite his getting on age, he wouldn't budge for Logan. How did it happen? Press Boker let it slip out to me when he'd had too much to drink. Said Logan would come out here one night, full of whiskey and hate and... And killed him. Seen Logan? Mingo. I speak to you as a woman asking you not to force the dropping of blood. Rourke Logan means well, but like any man, is capable of violence. Please get out of Logan's fort before you push him to it. He doesn't mean well, Alkini. You are wrong. Indians and whites can't live together. You know that as well as I do. Your mother was Cherokee, your father a Scot. Do you think they'd agree with you? What do you know about Indians? Worse yet, half-breeds. For your own sake, Mingo, go where you belong. Now. 
Alkini, look at me. Tell me what you see. A foolish man. No, I mean a good, close look. My blood is mixed like yours, Alkini. That's right. My father was an English officer. He came here on a surveying expedition. My mother, a full-blooded Cherokee. But your speech. I was educated across the sea at a school called Oxford. Does anyone here know? Only you. But the clothes you wear are those of a white man. Yes, well, they far less have to get me into trouble considering what I have to do here at Logan's Fort. Why? Do you think I'm ashamed of being half Cherokee? Because I assure you, Alkini, when I return to Boonesboro, I'll dress as I always do. As a Cherokee. So you are a half-breed. That does not change what I know. Rourke Logan has done what had to be done. He's a hard man, but a good man. Good men don't kill innocent people. He did not kill anyone. Alkini. He killed Craw Green. I do not believe it. See Logan. Where is he? I don't know. Strange coincidence, Mr. Boker. I have one with the same initials. I've had it since the night you killed Craw Green's son. That's where I know you from. You're a breed. That's right. Half of one, half of another. I want to take you apart with my bare hands. <laughs> against Indian fighting like that before. Now, come on. Come on. Tell me, Boker, who put you up to killing Kanadi Green? He was 
reaching for a knife. It appears I saved your skin. live to see some critters stand up to Logan. Don't get your hopes up. Logan ain't gonna let him stand much longer. Oh, good day, Mr. Logan. I want your advice, Thaddeus. What do you think Mingo's going to do? Well, I don't rightly know. Are you keeping anything from me, Thaddeus? I told you never to hold out on me, Thaddeus. I told you. I don't know. But he's got the title to Craw Green's place. I, I seen it. What is it, Alkini? It's everything. You and I have always been honest with each other. You can tell me. I've always believed that what you've done has been right. And now? Did you kill Craw Green? He left with the others. Mingo says you killed him. I should take the word of a stranger over mine. I don't know what to believe. Alkini, what is it you want most in this life? To live in peace as you promised we could. And I've lived up to that promise. I've changed this settlement from an overnight stop for whiskey traders and trappers. And I've stopped the bloodletting between the Indians and the whites. And what do you plan to do about Mingo? That I've tried to appeal to him. Mingo holds the title to that property. Do you know what that means? The only water in this area runs through that land. This settlement could die of thirst if I don't control it. Mingo isn't that kind of man. Perhaps you're right. But I cannot risk the future of this settlement on a stranger who holds the most valuable piece of land. Then you intend to. No. Not if you do as I ask you to. What can I do? The title is in Mingo's room. It must be. You get it? And he, he'll ride out of here unharmed. If not, I'll kill him, Alkini. to be friendly. He's a fine-looking horse. Thank you. Do you know where everybody's talking about you? They are? What are they saying? My ma told me not to tattle. Oh, then uh, I suppose you shouldn't tell. They say you like Indians. Oh. Do you think it's bad for someone to like Indians? Uh-uh. Are you afraid of me? Uh-uh. Well, then I, I consider that we can be friends, don't you think? Hmm? I reckon. My friends buy me candy sometimes. Oh, well, I wouldn't want to be any different. Uh, there you are. <sighs> That'll take care of your sweet tooth. And your little friend, too. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm.
find the title there. Well, what kind of a story did he sell you this time? I am trying to save your life. He must be getting desperate to use you. Mingo, I know you're a strong man. I watched you fight Boker. But Rourke Logan is not an ordinary man. You must give him that title. You still believe in him, don't you? He said he didn't kill Craw Green. I can show you Craw Green's grave hidden beneath a pile of rocks. I don't want rocks. to see it! Look, Alkini, we all make mistakes. Why don't you admit yours? To yourself, at least. All right. I admit it. Does that satisfy you? You're still trying to protect him. Why? Logan is a half-breed, like us. Only different. He was reared as a warrior. When he was only a boy, he fought many battles. Even so, his own tribe cast him out because he was a breed. He hates his mixed blood. He spent many years denying it. I'm the only one who knows his secret. Nobody is going to stop him when he's so close to having his dream. And what kind of a dream is that? How can anyone deny what they are? Mingo, save yourself. Give him that title. I have a better idea. You come with me. Thaddeus, you still are the duly authorized law here at Fort Logan, aren't you? And since no member of the Green family is still alive, the law says that this title belongs to the holder. Is that right? It is. I want to transfer it to the name of Alkini Matthews. But that's the same as giving it to Logan. That's a decision that Alkini will have to make. Oh, there's one other item. You still know what a warrant is, don't you? I do. Then make one out for Roark Logan, charging him with the murder of Crawford Green. going to serve it. You are, Thaddeus. And I'll stand behind you. Tell me you're going to serve a warrant, Thaddeus. Is that a fact, Thaddeus? Serve it, Thaddeus. Serve it. told me Craw Green moved on with the others. I saw his grave. <laughs> it just sort of slipped my memory that, uh, that he died suddenly. Killed is the word. Shot down by you. You think these people are going to help you take me, knowing you're a breed? They really don't have much choice, since you and I are both breeds. One of them returns to the earth.
I'm going to kill you, Logan. I'm going to leave it to the people of this settlement to determine your fate. That is, Elkini. Goodbye, and thank you. I'll take good care of the land, and the water will again belong to all, including the Indian when they return. Just how long you gonna stand there, young lady? We got us a christening to attend to. A christening? 